Good day. It's me again. And yada yada yada. It's the uh, 6th of July, 2013. And I want to show you the game of Clack, which I invented. It is the most civilized game in the entire universe. You need four croquet balls and two croquet hoops. You set them up about 12 feet apart or so, and then you take a ball and you attempt to throw it so that it goes through the hoop. If you throw it through the hoop, it scores two points. And then, if you hit another ball that's already out there, that scores one point. See, that scored three points because it hit the other one for one point, and then it went through, scoring two, so a total of three points. And that one went through and clacked, and so that was another three points, so I have scored six points. Now the other person would be on the other side and pick up the balls and throw theirs. And you uh, keep taking turns, and the first person to get to 21 wins, however, the other person gets their throw. So, say for example, you're both at 18. You score four points, so someone's gotten to 21, and um, the other person gets a throw. If they also get to 21, then the game ends in a tie. Uh, but that's not really what I, I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about laziness and the virtues of laziness. Uh, here's a good example. I have a massive amount of food here. So I've done nothing to produce. These are Jerusalem artichokes, also known as sunchokes, a type of sunflower. I keep them here far away from any other plants because they will spread underground. Uh, you eat the little rhizomes or tuber-like things that um, taste like a cross between a potato and an artichoke and are possibly the most delicious vegetable in the world, up there with Gailan. And uh, if you have them around anything else, they will spread and take over all agricultural land, and every farmer for miles around will want to kill you, with good reason. Anyway, this was a very, very odd year here in Michigan, and uh, winter lasted about a month and a half longer than it should have. Spring was very, very, very cold and very, very wet, and we never had drought. Everything had to wait to go in because the soil um, simply didn't heat up enough. And then once it went in, it was very, very slow growth because um, the ambient temperature was very cold. And then I've been very, very busy, and so I haven't had a chance to do much cultivation, such as taking this giant weed and getting rid of it. Uh, what I have done over the years is deliberately allowed certain plants to become weeds. Uh, so that then uh, more of the weeds are edible. So, for example, here I have quelites, uh, lots and lots of quelites, which I eat. Um, when it's smaller than this, it's great raw. Uh, at this size, I cook it up for um, a cooked green as a pot herb. It tastes like spinach. There's plenty, as you can see here, that the deer eat it, and sometimes then it works as a catch crop. Uh, I have favas here and peas interplanted. And then in here, I had some old uh, winter squash from last year, which I just threw out and allowed the seeds to grow up on their own. I'm not going to grow those for winter squash. I'm just going to harvest the squash flowers, which I find to be a delightful vegetable. Um, if you chop it up and uh, put it half and half with cheese in a quesadilla, it's fantastic. Uh, if you allow arugula to do this, produce these beautiful flowers, which are quite edible. You uh, can also produce on each plant millions and millions of seeds, which means you'll never pay for arugula again as long as you live. Here, hidden amongst the chickweed, we have a big healthy arugula plant like this. Now, that's perfect for cooking. It's a little large for salad, but it'd be okay for salad. Um, you get a few of these plants and boom, you've got a, a cooked arugula dish. And uh, I find arugula goes very well with grilled chicken um, and perhaps some mandarin oranges. 
and apricots and cashews stuff like that. It's just fantastic and uh, I've got tons of it growing. I sometimes like to let things go to seed like mustard and then mustard will produce voluminous quantities of weeds everywhere and uh, here you'll notice my beans have been sowed very very close together and there's a reason for that because I have deer herds of up to maybe 60 deer at a time as you can see there's a cornfield here and that attracts the deer and they love tender leaves of beans so there's nothing I can do to prevent the deer you can try everything spend a ton of money and nothing will work they'll just come in and so I adapt to them and I find that deer actually just want to eat the leaves off of the the uh, green beans and they'll wait until the the beans start flowering as you can see there's lots of flowers and they're not actually eating the flowers and so uh, I will get a crop of beans off of this even though it looks like the, the plants completely destroyed it isn't it will produce beans and then the plant will regenerate and grow up again you see these are have been attacked by the deer and then over here is what they would look like if they hadn't been attacked by deer so those will regenerate to this point and then the deer will come back because essentially they're farmers themselves they're cultivating the beans and they'll come back to eat more beans I have also planted beans everywhere um, as you can see and I uh, also have many many weeds uh, this is a mature chicory chicory is wonderful in the in the spring and as I say it will take over if you let it which is fine because then it competes with all the other weeds this is a baby arugula perfect for salad and this is a large arugula perfect for cooking and then over here I have what could only be described as um, mustard as a weed all of this is mustard with just a little bit of arugula mixed in and so consequently I never pay for mustard seeds it just comes back year after year and I let a bunch go to uh, go to seed and then I just simply don't worry about it and as you can see there's I, I vir do virtually no work here other than just throwing the stuff in um, here's a massive kill eat this plant in amongst the the onions this you could strip it down and cook it and that's enough for one person here is red root pigweed uh, it's a type of amaranth uh, again you can what like this the leaves are good for cooking as a pot herb um, if you let the really go to town uh, to seeds you can use that in baking I have of course lots of garlic and green onions and shallots and I know it's early but we had so much uh, rain that the potatoes are coming in I know this does not look like a potato plant you would harvest but in fact if you dig it up and look at this point there's plenty of good potatoes for eating just the perfect size and as I say this is quite early but that will make for one very nice breakfast uh, with some of those green onions maybe harvest some green garlic the, the garlic is too soon to harvest uh, properly for storage but when it's like this um, just starting to die back at the top if you if you harvest one you'll see that it's actually perfectly mature for eating and uh, it'll keep for a couple of weeks on the counter or in the fridge and the uh, skin will be um, very clear and not dry at all and it'll be absolutely delicious for eating or cooking uh, either either raw or cooked anyway this is a terrible garden it's a complete mess as you can see I've done virtually no work put virtually no money into it and uh, most of its weeds which I will eat and it's still lots of fun so um, just an idea of things you can do have a wonderful rest of July we'll be back when the garden looks totally different bye bye for now